One of the sublime pleasures of watching movies is when you watch a film that's better than it's being sold. It's the only industry, really, that I can think of where somebody will take a product that's good, a thing that's sophisticated, well-made, well put together, and tell its prospective market that it's shittier than it actually is. And that's what the people that made Contraband are doing by cutting together a trailer that takes all of its action sequences, of which there are a couple, and they're pretty good, and puts a bunch of lines that didn't actually, for the most part, make it into the film. Like, we're going to war. Say goodbye to your wife. All this, like, super macho, tough guy kind of action movie lines, and cuts that together to make Contraband look like it's a high-octane, pulse-pounding, you know, action thriller. And it's not really it's as macho as that but it's much better than that. It's a much better film than it's being sold as. It's not like you, you see an ad on TV for a car and they're like presenting the 2012 Hondo Jodeci. It's got only three wheels. It has no storage. It has an engine on the roof and it smells like shit. And then you go and because and it's all you can afford or it's the only new car and they're like, oh yeah, actually it's a Cadillac. That never happens. You never get advertised chopped hamburger and fine sirloin. Movies, enjoying them, is the only situation where that can happen. And when it happens, it's great. You can understand why they're doing it with contraband, because idiotic movies make more money than smart movies, so they're trying to make their movie look idiotic. But it's not. It's actually much better than that. In fact, the only things you can say that are wrong with it are kind of nitpicky. It's this super macho, you know, it basically had a casting call. If you're an intense, white male actor between the age of 25 and 35, come be in our movie. They got them all. They've got Ben Foster from 310 to Yuma. They have Caleb Landry Jones, who is an even younger, even more intense, kind of slight young guy. They have Giovanni Ribisi, they have Diego Luna, they have Lucas Haas. They have all of these people, these young, talented actors, together just being intense criminals in what's actually a reasonably good, well put together crime drama. The one nit that you could pick is that it's too intense. It's There's no kind of jokes in the middle of it. And you can understand why, because when you make a movie like this, with a script like this, about a smuggler who's trying to bring in drugs to save his family because there's a mean gangster, da, 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 usually the parts that are supposed to be tense are kind of stupid and kind of funny anyways, so there's a relief built into the story that you're trying to tell. Except when you cast a bunch of actors, and you have a talented director, the guy, Baltazar Kormakur, who was the actor in the Icelandic version of this film, which was called Reykjavik to Rotterdam. When you have all of that together, you can't rely on the inherent stupidity of a goofy crime premise to provide some relief because the actors actually make it compelling and believable. So the film has no kind of relief valve for the entirely kind of way too tense, hour-long middle chunk that is the smuggling scene. The other nit you could theoretically pick is why have a woman in this movie at all? There's one woman, really, that has any lines whatsoever, and that's the character played by Kate Beckinsale. She's the main character's wife, and all she is is an object to be fought over. It's really depressing when you see these movies that have uh, one woman, because inevitably they're not actually a real person, and inevitably they're just kind of a, a MacGuffin with tits that the men struggle and fight over and put into jeopardy and it's kind of depressing. There's nothing worse than a movie with one woman, not even a movie with no women, because then if you have the balls as a filmmaker and marketing department to just make a movie with no women, you can't put her on the poster to try and trick guys' girlfriends into agreeing to go to the movie with them. So if you're gonna watch any movie instead, if you're not gonna go see Contraband, watch a movie that at least is honest enough to have zero women in it. One of the best zero women movies ever made, Ice Station Zebra, directed by John Sturgis, starring Ernest Borgnine and Rock Hudson as submarine people in the Arctic with spies and action in space. It's really good, and no women in it, much more honest and straightforward than making a movie with just one woman, like a contraband. Which, despite having that nit in it, is still really good.